Hello again, it's David. Today I'm just going to put a bit of a tin lid on this uh, prototype uh, Atari ST 16 MHz uh, plus alt RAM booster that I, uh, I built um, a video or two ago. Uh, this is uh, still completely prototype form because if you remember I got my form factor wrong uh, for the uh, 68000 socket so there's all sorts of adaptables going on here and uh, a load of hacked mess but this was only really the sort of first iteration and I hope to uh, to be able to spin another board. Um, I, I am thinking about doing something slightly different changing the the way that I handle the, S, uh, the SD RAM a little bit and putting a pair of back-to-back -back latches in there so that um, I only have to um, retrieve the data once and hold it in the latch until it's ready. Uh, hopefully make things a little bit more efficient uh, firmware wise. So that's, um, that's what I'm uh, hoping to do next. So this is kind of the end of the line for this one. I thought I'd just give a bit of a demonstration as to where we are. So this has got a slightly confusing setup here. This is my uh, STE to PLCC adapter. Uh, sorry, PLCC to uh, DIP64 adapter for, for the STE to let it use ST, um, plain ST uh, expansions. Uh, I've got my board in here. This is a hacked adapter board and here's a 60 megahertz 68000 sat on top. Coming out here I've got an external oscillator. This is variable just to allow me to use it. There's a 32 megahertz oscillator on board, which is fine for what we're doing here, but I wanted to uh, to test the SD RAM at the fastest, at the most optimal speed, which is approximately 66 megahertz uh, to um, a clock for the SD RAM. It should get uh, the best performance. Uh, the uh, That's then divided down uh, four times to get 16 megahertz for the CPU, and the SD RAM runs at the full 64. And obviously the main system bus is 8 megahertz, which is being fed in as well. So we are switching up to uh, provide the 16 megahertz booster, and we've got ourselves 8 megabytes. That's actually a 16 um, megabyte SD-RAM chip on there, but I've only, I'm only using 8 of it. In production will obviously be 8. Uh, it could, in theory, add another 2 megabytes, because you can have 10 megabytes of, of alt RAM. So it's got 8 megabytes of alt RAM, and it switches to 16 megahertz. Uh, it's just all topless at the moment because the um, obviously this huge stack is n is uh, never going to fit in the case. Um, a uh, a real production uh, version will obviously have to be turned around. That's fine. This is all alpha uh, build stuff. So that's the external oscillator. We've got um, just an LED in here. This is going to indicate when we're accessing the fast RAM, the alt RAM, the uh, the the SD RAM built in there, and that's all just powered from uh, the main board here, piggybacking on the main board. We've got my ACSI to uh, STM uh, plugged in the back, which we're going to use to boot. And these are just here for storage. These are sort of just test lines that I use to connect to uh, my um, uh, logic analyzer. And there's also just a load of uh, pins uh, coming out the side of that adapter board, which I also use for the logic analyzer. So this is basically now the uh, uh, the final firmware for this, uh, this issue. And I'll uh, quickly demonstrate uh, what we can do with it. So we just power up initially. So I've got TOS 2.06 in the uh, the EPROMs in here. See a previous video for uh, um, for when I uh, fitted those. And at the moment, this just boots up into uh, EmuCon to allow me to decide what to launch. So if I just exit, what we have here is the plain desktop. This is 16 megahertz desktop, but with no uh, alt RAM. So uh, the main advantage of this is you can use the blitter. I've had all sorts of trouble with the blitter and I've basically decided I'm just not going to support it. Uh, so you can use the blitter here. This is 16 megahertz mode. Uh, this will provide some boost but because it's not got that fast RAM, not that much. If we do the gem dialog box test here And whilst that's running, you'll see that the blue LED is not illuminated. No uh, alt RAM is in, in use here. So we got to, oh, because I've turned the blitter off. So we're comparing with blitter on. So 66% is what we uh, get with the blitter off. Um, that's still not bad because it's 60 megahertz. But obviously with the, uh, the blitter on, we'd expect uh, to get slightly over 100%. The reason why I say slightly over 100% again, there's no fast working RAM. This is purely just 
cutting in the processor into high speed mode when it can and most of this work is being done from uh, ROM and STRAM which is not accelerated and you get a pretty paltry 102%. The integer division is pretty good. That comes out at 195%, uh, which is not bad, but there's, there's you know, marginal other acceleration. This is still pretty compatible, it'll work with games. If I were to run front bench, uh, we'd get a figure of around, uh, what I run that speed meter on here. Um, so here you see, look, uh, it's 110, 112 percent, and that is kind of the figure you'd expect. We know what we're on. We've looked into, uh, we've looked into this before. Now we can run front bench, but I'm not going to let it go all the way through because yeah, we've been here before with the uh, with just the 60 megahertz switcher, and we get about 940 something like that frames, um, which is not a great improvement over the 850 you, you get stock. So, uh, as I say, I'm not going to go down that road today, but instead what we'll do is just demonstrate the uh, the fast RAM. Uh, what I've done is I've redeveloped the, the SD RAM driver I've got on here, and it's now a little bit more efficient. I should be able to show this off. So, if I run the, uh, the alt RAM driver, this will obviously normally just be in the auto folder. Now, when the desktop appears, you might have noticed that we're getting some blue flashing lights. And if I start clicking around the place, we get a little flash from the, uh, the SD-RAM indicator. Now, what we can, uh, what we can do is to, uh, to demonstrate that with, uh, with GemBench. If we actually run GemBench here, you'll see that uh, it actually now says it's run from Alt-RAM. And if we do the uh, the auto RAM test, uh, we're there. We go. Look, full brightness now as it really hammers the uh, uh, the auto RAM. Um, we're we're accessing this at basically 16 megahertz, no uh, wait states. Uh, it's full speed auto RAM. And there we go. 206 percent. That's compared to normal ST RAM speeds, and we can uh, demonstrate that as well with a uh, mem speed tester. This is just a slightly cut down version of uh, mem speed that uh, skips the ST RAM test because we know that's 3.7 megabits per second, megabytes per second, sorry, and it goes through L1, L2 and main. There's no L1 or L2, there's no point. So uh, this is just cut down. Does L1 and main, L1 just in case we had no 3.0, L1 and main on uh, the TT RAM only. And there we go, 7.6 plays 7.6, ST RAM is 3.7. We're, we're looking at actually just slightly over, 77 there. We're looking at just slightly over twice uh, the speed. Now, unfortunately, there's a catch. And in my case, let me just drop down a little bit there. And in my case, it is sadly the blitter. Now, as far as I know, and correct me downstairs if I'm wrong, the blitter should work with all that. The blitter sits outside it sits on this this chip down here outside of the uh, the memory management unit and it uh, can see my memory on here and it asserts um, bus request and it takes bus mastery and it requests on the 23 um, address lines it requests the data properly and my system uh, should be perfectly capable of answering that and servicing it and it kind of works to a point but then I go up to a menu and I click away from the menu and there'd be just a little bit of corruption on the screen something just not quite right and I've been working on this now for a couple of weeks and I'm really not getting anywhere with it so um, also it turns out that I can't quite service the request fast enough if I'm checking for both to let mint run and since I'm a big mint user that seems a bit of a shame um, so the, uh, the decision I've taken is that probably most people who want to use it probably with the desktop would use NVDI anyway and the blitter is almost irrelevant when you uh, when you do that. So this is what I mean. Unfortunately, if I switch the blitter on here, and then I access the menu and I come out, I'll just get a blank. Now my system is correctly asserting that it, it the blitter is not supported when it accesses that, um, but unfortunately there's no fallback. I need to check whether um, Anders Granlund's 
uh, Blitfix program can work with this. It's not intended for, for uh, Alt RAM, it's intended for uh, TT RAM, but maybe there's something we can do with that. Uh, but that's a bit of a shame, um, and that is unfortunately reflected when we come in to look at the uh, uh, the figures on Gembin. So this is run from Alt RAM, it's in 16 megahertz mode. Um, we should get a bit of a speed boost on the integer, integer division compared with what we had before because uh, the instructions are going to be executing or uh, being retrieved from memory twice as fast. Uh, previously they were running from STRAM. So where was, we were about 195%, we were actually over 200% now. Um, so that is a, a nice boost and we've seen that the uh, the AltRAM runs, runs quite quickly but then if we look at this gem dialog box again which is our which is the one that we we tested earlier on. Because the blit is disabled, we unfortunately um, get a uh, a weaker figure. And if we were to run the full gamut of tests, we'd see that our average speed increase is only about 120%, which is not much off what we had before. And that's because, there we go, 67, um, compared to with the blitter enabled. We can enable the blitter. And if I could make it work, this would be great, but look, you see we've got the black boxes here where it's actually doing the blitting. Um, if I can make it work, it'd be great because uh, you'll see that the actual um, the speed improvement we're having the instructions running in uh, in fast RAM gives us a nice boost. Uh, but yeah, there we go, another blitter artifact. So unfortunately, that's uh, that's the uh, the negative, that's the downside, but as I say, if we're using NVDI and working with the desktop, it's it's no problem at all. So uh, if we go back and have a look at our speedo now, just for speed meter now, just for um, interest sake, uh, you'll see that we're now jumping to 195%. So I suppose it really depends what you want to do. If, you, if you're working heavily with the screen and you, you really need the blitter, then uh, this um, I, I can build a version where the blitter kind of works, but it's, it's just not good enough, I don't think, for for day-to-day -day use, unfortunately. So I'm not a uh, not a fan of it. I can't really work out how to exit this program. I'll just reboot. Now, to mitigate that downside just a little bit, what I've done with a little bit of um, really Exos's suggestion was to provide an alternative. So you might have seen when the alt RAM command was coming up the screen there, we had, uh, let me uh, try and do it again. We had a few um, pieces of information. Successfully top copied TOS to SD RAM. TOS redirection failed, but I've enabled it and done the, the cookie. Well, that's obviously trying to do something. In this case, it's not allowing it to, but with a slightly different program, which I call Alt-ROM. We've enabled TOS redir redirection, otherwise continues as normal. And now you might notice that our blue light is on a lot more, even when it's just sitting here. So what we've actually done is we've copied, in that fraction of a second, we've copied the ROM, in this case TOS 2.06, from there into the SD RAM, and I've allocated one megabyte less. So there's only seven megabytes of SD RAM allocated now. Allocated one megabyte less, and I'm using that instead of the ROM whenever the processor wants to get something from the OS. In this case, it runs twice as fast. In fact, potentially more than that. So now when we come down to the desktop, again, you'll see that the light's on all the time, and we've got a nice speed boost. This is not going to be as quick as if we were running with the blitter. But we have to bear in mind, of course, is not all machines have blitter, and even those that uh, uh, even those that do, um, you may often wish to trade off one for uh, the other. So in this case, this is running with blitter disabled, but with TOS in ROM. Look at it, uh, TOS in RAM. Look at it hammering away there, and it mitigates the loss of the blitter to a certain extent. We're still a little bit slower, but we're only 8% slower. And when you uh, combine that with the speed boost that we get from having everything else uh, accelerated by the fast RAM, I don't think that's a bad trade-off. We lose a megabyte, 
the 256k worth of, of ROM, I could actually allocate a little bit more at the end and do the other 768k. Um, it's not a bad idea. Should probably uh, do that. That's, that can all just be done in software. Uh, I, uh, I hadn't thought about it at the time because, to be honest, I think eight megabytes of alt RAM is, is, is plenty. Uh, to be honest, about seven megabytes is plenty. Don't see there's much difference. There we go, 206% ROM speed, because it's not actually talking to the ROMs, it's talking to our alt phone. So, uh, well, the ROM's fairly irrelevant for games, uh, uh, I'll be honest. Um, and if we uh, do our uh, speed meter now, we get, there we go, it pushes above 200 and 200%, uh, which is fair enough. I still don't know how to exit that. Now, of course, where this extra memory uh, uh, and performance uh, really comes in handy is with something like Mint, which has barely enough to boot uh, without it. If we... Um, I don't have... Unfortunately, uh, my ACSI uh, system doesn't work with HD driver, ACSI to SDM, so I've got the ICD tools and they're not HD... Uh, XHDI compatible, so Mint doesn't play very nicely uh, for me um, on this uh, on this system uh, natively. But if it did, and I boosted up without the alt RAM, I get less than about a megabyte free of uh, of space. So that's where the alt RAM uh, comes in very handy indeed. Now we can demonstrate that not with using my ICD drivers, but by actually using Emutos. So I've got a copy of Emutos here. If we run that boot up. Uh, there we go. It auto detects and auto activates the eight megabytes of Altram. Now the TOS redirect doesn't work with Emutos, but well, it's I'm running it for a program anyway, so it doesn't matter. Emutos automatically allocates its memory, so I can't do my little trick of copying it and then allocating this. So if we let that uh, run uh, Mint now. This is unfortunately going to boot up into low resolution because if I hard code it to boot to medium resolution, then uh, oh no, it has come into medium. Ah, because I ran it from MU MU uh, com. Oh, that's uh, that's a bonus. I haven't thought about that. There we go. I've come straight into uh, I've come straight into uh, medium resolution, but it looks ugly because I was previously running in low resolution and it's uh, <laughs> piled on my icons on top of each other. That's pretty abysmal as well, to be honest. But the point is, it's Mint and it's working. And if we look at the um, the task manager, here we go. <sighs> I'm not a big fan of XAES in um, in medium resolution. The, the proportions are just all wrong. Look, nothing fits on the screen. This is I tend to use this in in, in high res. Um, AES 4.1 obviously works fine, but not with Mint 1.19. It's a bug. It's known. It's on their system, and no one's really paid it much heed. Uh, but uh, there we go. Look, we've got. Uh, Nearly uh, well, nine and a bit megs um, memory free. We've got eight megs of fast total that's picked up, and of which six and a half or six and a quarter are free. So this makes for a a much more usable oh dear a much more usable. Um, uh, it's not the colour that's the problem, is it? Just change to the white. Yeah. A much more usable um, uh, multi source experience. We can realistically run multiple processes. With a nice little bit of acceleration on the top. There we go. So obviously it paused it whilst it was doing the memory test, but there we are. We've got roughly the same figures uh, in a multitasking environment, and we're quite happily running Bash in the background, which, by the way, would not run at all 
uh, just with the normal four megabytes of SD RAM, it just requires far too much, uh, far too much memory. Trade off for that, blitter. Perhaps a. Uh, well, I'm going to publish all of this once I've got a a, a non-hacked <laughs> together version here, and maybe somebody can contribute a better firmware that will uh, that will deal with the um, uh, the uh, the bus slave and um, and bus master uh, roles um, uh, equally well. So uh, I suppose the uh, there's not a lot left to uh, to demonstrate. We should uh, maybe finish with the uh, the time honoured tradition of playing out uh, with Frontier. Um, oh, just occurred to me actually. I've got one more comparison I can give you. Let's uh, let's go back to um, let's go back to our accelerated plane toss. Uh, let's get uh, alt rom uh, to auto boot and uh, remove emucon. So this is more obviously how you would use it. It would be a uh, um, a reboot with just the alt rom driver in uh, in the auto folder. Toss redirection active, here we go. Right, so one of the much more impressive tools to measure uh, performance on the, on the ST platform is Christian Zietz's uh, port of Cor Cormark, and he's got a, uh, a particular configuration that he uses, and he gathers uh, he gathers results on his website, and I'll, I'll need to submit mine when I've got a, uh, a production version. He gathers the results on his website, so we can measure uh, the effective performance of the memory and CPU combination. Obviously, this doesn't take into account the blitter, so the feel might be slightly different. Here we go. Right, so we've got ourselves a figure. This is the key one. We've got ourselves a figure under the standard core mark uh, test of 4.073 iterations per second. And if I were to look up on, the, uh, on, his, on his website, which I shall uh, link in, uh, the comparisons, the stock uh, STE, uh, stock ST, STE, there we go, is a 1.92, so we're over twice as fast, which is what we expect. Uh, an ST with, um, uh, a 68010 and uh, Storm Alt RAM is 2.07, so we're, we're doing better than that. A Mega STE without the cache is 2.12. Uh, a Mega ST with the hyper cache accelerator is 2.12 as well. Uh, an STE with a 32 megahertz accelerator but no Alt RAM is uh, 2.58. A Falcon running at 8 megahertz uh, is 3.17. Mega ST, STE with the cache on is 3.62. We're beating all of these. Uh, and we've got to get up to, okay, an ST with a PAC 682. So that's an 68020 at 16 megahertz is 4.02. And then the next one is uh, an ST at, with a 32 megahertz, 68020, which is 4.8. So we're not quite at that one. So 4.07, we are uh, basically until we get up to 32 megahertz and more advanced processors, we are in the lead. In fact, well, we're beating a we're beating an eight megahertz Falcon, but I suppose that's not uh, that's not that uh, unexpected. Uh, interestingly, the uh, the first 16 megahertz Falcon one that appears on the list is at uh, a 16 megahertz True Color mode, 5.38. So we're actually closer to that than we are the stock ST. So that's pretty good performance-wise. So I think let's go back to the the beginning and we'll run ourselves we'll play ourselves out with front bench
Uh, now we can run front bench, although um, I'm not going to let it go all the way through because uh, uh, we've done this before and we're shitting fun.